in this playwright tutorial we are going to discuss about locators in playwright so there are multiple ways of identifying the web element by using the playwright so let's see one by one the very first one is by role we can identify the web page element so this is an example here you can see that await keyword followed by page dot get by role so here i have added link so this can be checkbox or even it can be the button also and also we have to specify the respective value over here so this is the name is the constant field so which we have to add it and after that we can perform the respective action so it can be click on the checkbox or button and uh, we can use the fill also to enter some data into the text box if it is a text box and second one is by label we can identify the web page element the example is very much similar to the above example and in this case we are using the label value that means the wherever you see the tag is having a multiple attributes so within that attributes if you are able to find the area label you can pass that particular value over here and then you can pass the whether you need a partial match or the exact match if you want a exact match you need to pass the true here and then you can perform the respective action it can be click or fill the value into the text box and third one is by using the alt text so here also example is very much same so here you can use the await keyword followed by page dot get by alt text so here so wherever you are seeing the alt attribute then that has the text so that text can be passed over here and then you can perform the action actions whatever it is it can be click or you can enter the some data into the text field and next one is by using the test id for example so by using the test id also we can identify the web page element so this is a very custom attribute this attribute name will be configured in the playwright configuration file so it is very simple guys so this particular attribute name will be configured in the configuration file and then simply you need to pass the respective value over here so this particular configuration will be done only to the field which is very common across the whole project only then you can perform the respective actions and the next one is by using the text you can identify the web page element so if you are using directly by text and if you are not specifying the exact colon true that means that is a partial match and it will perform the actions on the web page element and if you are if you are adding the exact colon true so this is the complete match with the text what you are adding inside the get by text method and coming to the next way of identifying the web page element is by using the title so wherever you are seeing the tag is having the title attribute simply you can pass the title value over here and so this is a method what we will we will be using to identify the element by using the get by title so title attribute value we have to pass on to this particular function then we can perform the respective actions and the seventh locator type is xpath so in this case so if you see the this particular example right so there's a await and followed by the page dot locator so previously we were using the get by title get by text or get by role or get by test id but in this case when we are using the xpath so we are using only locator so here we have to add the within a double quotes or a single quotes we have to specify the xpath here so this xpath can be added or it can be ignored also so directly you can specify the xpath value also so that is also accepted in the playwright and similarly we have the css selector so we can write the css selector and that can be used as the locator to perform the actions the example is very much similar to the xpath only so we have to use await followed by page dot locator and here we have to pass the css so if you are passing css equal to or simply you can directly pass the even the directly css selector also so so this is not this is an optional value what you can pass on to the css selector and also to the xpath where you are passing the xpath equal to 
So this is not the mandatory value you need to write into the locator method. And coming to the last one, by placeholder, we can identify the web page element. So wherever you are having the placeholder attribute, so that value can be passed on to the page dot by placeholder. And here, once you add the placeholder attribute value over here, and you can perform the respective actions. So let's see all these examples with respect to the real time web applications. Let's see the very first example that is by using the role, how you can identify the element and uh, how you can perform the actions on the web page element. So let's quickly create the one JS file inside the tests folder. So here I'll say locators dot spec dot JS. So that's it. I will go to the first test dot spec dot JS file. Simply I'll copy this test and I will keep only the skeleton of the test. Then I will delete the rest of the details. And here I will modify the test name. So here I'll say locators test. That's it. So we are using await page dot go to to navigate to the URL. So I will remove this URL and we will use the new URL. So here I'll say firstly by role. So by role we are going to identify the element and then we will perform the actions on that particular element. So firstly here I am navigating to the google.com and searching with cypress by testers talk and that's it guys. So simply I will take this particular URL. So this is the URL for us and if you see the videos, images, shopping, news. So these are the links here. So let's click on this particular videos or images or shopping. Shopping, sorry. So if I inspect this particular videos, right? So this is the link guys. So you can take an example of any button or checkbox also, it will work fine. So I'm showing an example with respect to the link, how you can use the link to identify the element by using the role. So if you see here, so this is the anchor tag. That means it is a link, right? So simply I will copy this particular URL and then we will click on the this particular videos very first time. Then we will click on the images. So here I'm navigating to this particular URL by using the page dot go to method. And after that, so here I'm using the await followed by page dot get by role. So here we have to pass the firstly we here we have to say whether it is a link or checkbox or button or yeah so these are the few values or a combo box also if you see here so here you can see that some of the examples also so right now we are adding only link here you can see that combo box checkbox and there are many other inbuilt value can be passed over here to the get by role so firstly i'm passing the link and followed by that we have to pass the object so that is the name colon and in the single quotation we have to add the videos right now i want to click on this particular videos this is the link and then later we will click on the images as well so that's it guys then i will perform the action as click so let's wait for some time. So after clicking on the videos, so here I will use the await followed by page dot wait for timeout. So here I will pass around 7000 milliseconds. That means seven seconds. That's it guys. Now let's run this particular test and we should be able to click on the videos. And I will come back and I will show you what are the different ways of using the get by role and if you see here so it has already click, clicked on the videos link and already it is closed the browser and also our test is getting passed now let's pass the images now and this time it should click on the images
and if you see here it has clicked on the images also right so this is how you can use the get by role locator and if i hover my mouse on the get by role so here you can see the possible examples also so get by role can be used by using the you can pass the heading checkbox button also you can pass even the link also so these are the couple of examples to identify the element by using the get by role now let's identify the element by using the area label so here i'll say label that's it guys so what i will do right in this example let me comment out this particular let me take this particular first line we will navigate to the one of the url firstly so we will navigate to the google google.com and here if i inspect this particular search text box so which is the text area tag and inside this we have the one attribute called area label so if you see here so area label area, area label is equal to search so we will pass this particular search value inside the get by label function so i will go back to the vs code and here i will add the url as google.com and then so we have to identify that element by using the get by label so here i'll say page dot get by label so here i'll pass the search as the value and after that so here we have to pass the another object also so here we have to say exact colon true so i'm finding an element by using the area label which has the exact search as the value so that's the reason here i'm passing the true so let's enter something in that google search text box so here i'll say api testing by tester stock that's it and once we enter value inside this text box so we will hit the enter by using the keyboard so simply i will take this particular locator and then i will call to the one method called press so inside press simply i will pass the enter so this will press presses the enter from the keyboard that's it guys so here we are using the get by label and we are passing the value of the area label attribute that's it guys so let's run this particular test so you have seen how you can use the get by role previously and now we are going to see how we can use the get by label also so i'm showing one way so if you see here so it has entered the text and also it has pressed the enter also we saw the results for the required search keywords and if i mouse over on the get label so there are positive different ways of using the get by label also so if you see here so we have the input tag where we have the array label and respective value and second tag where it has a label as the tag name and we have the value as a password and next tag we have the input and we have the id and if you see here down so these are the possible ways of using the get by label and where you are passing the respective just keywords and we are performing the respective actions so this is how we can use the get by role and get by label now let's see how to use get by all text and get by test id so here i will navigate to the web page and here so we need to navigate to the github.com slash backupian so you can take any web page example where you are able to find the alt as the attribute so if i inspect this particular image so we have the one attribute called alt and if you see here so we have the attribute called so we have the attribute and which has the view backupas backupians full sized avatar right so we will use this particular value and we will identify the this particular image and we will click on this particular image by using the get by alt text so here i will navigate to the vs code and 
So here I will comment out this particular part, so which is not required. And we are going to identify the element by using the alt text, right? So firstly, we have to navigate to the URL. So here I'll say page dot go to, and here we will add the URL. And after that, we have to identify the element. So by using the page dot, so get by alt text. And inside that, we have to simply add the text. So here I'll say text added or inside the alt text method. And after that, we have to click on that particular image. That's it. So we have performed the click operation here. So before that, we have to add the URL. Let's copy the URL. And I have added the URL. That's it guys. It's very simple. So wherever you see the alt attribute and which has the value and you can use the get by alt text. So I will run the test now. So it has opened the browser and it has navigated. And if you see here, it has clicked on the that particular image also, right? So it is waiting for some seconds and our test is getting passed also. Here you can see the check check mark also right so this is how you can use the alt text now let's see how to use the get by test id so here i'll say by test id so here i will navigate to the github dot sorry github.com followed by that so simply i will pass the login so this will navigate to the sign into github page so if i inspect this particular username text box which has the multiple attributes and respective values so here we are taking the one attribute called autocomplete so so whatever the, this particular way of identifying the element if you have seen right so as i said earlier also get by test id so this particular attribute we are going to add it in the configuration file and this particular attribute should be used across the project. Such kind of attribute can be added in the configuration file. So I will go back to the web page once again now. So here I'm considering this autocomplete is the attribute. So which is repeating again and again in my project. So I will take this particular attribute. And after that, I will pass only the respective value wherever I'm using the autocomplete attribute. So let's add this attribute into the or configuration file so it will say test id attribute colon and then in the single quotation simply add the attribute name and put the common that's it so once you add this particular test id attribute into the configuration file come back to the your test file and here so let's navigate to the url first so here we are navigating to the github.github.com github slash login so we will enter something in this particular username text field by using the autocomplete attribute value so here i will enter the url first and then let's identify the element by using the page dot get by test id so we have added the test id attribute in the configuration file so that's the reason. So simply I will pass the this particular respective value. So wherever you see autocomplete as the attribute and respective value, so you can use the get by test ID where you can simply pass the respective value. So no need to worry about the attribute name. So then here I'll say fill so I so that I can enter something in the username. So here I'll say tester stock. That's it guys. So we are done with adding the configuration in the playwright configuration file. And also we have written the locator for the get by test ID also. So this will open up the github.com login page. That's the sign in page. And it will add the username value in the field. And then it will close as the browser.
So if you look at here, so it has added the value which we have passed from the playwright test and it is closing the browser, right? So we are seeing the check mark here and also here we can see the results also. It's working perfectly fine. Now I will discuss how to use the get by text where we can pass the complete text and as well as the partial text. And also we will see how to use the get by title also to identify the web page element. Now let's see how to use the get by text. So here firstly we will navigate to the youtube.com slash at the rate tester stock. So we will use this particular URL and once we come down here, so we have the multiple playlist. So firstly we will use the partial text by using that we will perform the action on the web element. So here I will just use the Cypress by and we will click on the this particular playlist. So if you see here the complete text is Cypress by test at stock but we are mentioning just Cypress by. So here I will navigate to the VS code and so here I'll say by text and after that I will use the directly await keyword followed by that I will use the page and then here I'll say go to inside this I will add the URL and after that we will identify the element by using the get by text so here I'll say page dot get by text so here we will add the partial text so here I'll say only cypress by and we will click on the playlist so here I'll say just click operation that's it guys now let's execute the playwright test and we will see the results so it has navigated to the YouTube link and it has to open the Cypress by tester stock playlist and also it has done that and our test is passing right so this is this is how you can pass the partial text now this time I'm passing the complete text so here I'm saying Cypress by tester stock so I will run the same test once again this time also it opens the YouTube page and it goes to the Cypress by tester stock playlist and if you see here so it has clicked on the Cypress by tester stock and it is closing the browser and if you see here our test is getting passed so this is how we can use the get by text where you can pass the partial text or the complete text now let's see how to use the title so here i'll say by using the title so we will navigate to the same url so that's the reason i will copy this particular line where we are navigating to the youtube.com slash at the rate tester stock and if I inspect this particular playlist Cypress by tester stock so we have the attributes multiple attributes and within that you will be finding one attribute called title equal to Cypress by tester stocks so simply copy this particular value now we are going to identify the Cypress by tester stock playlist link by using the get by title so we navigate it to the YouTube link and now we have to identify the element so here I'm saying page dot get by title and here I'm adding the value of value of the title attribute and then I'm calling to the function called click that's it guys so we are done with writing the simple one line of code so here we have we are using the get by title and we are performing the click operation so let's run the playwright, playwright test now so it has to open the chrome browser and it has to it has to navigate to the youtube link and then finally it will navigate to the cypress by tester stock playlist and finally it is our test is getting passed, right?
so this is working as expected that's it guys now let's see how to use the xpath and css selector so we will navigate to the just youtube.com and here we are going to identify the search text box by using the xpath first so here i'm using the attribute called name so which has the search underscore query as the value and firstly i will write the to forward slash star and in the square brackets at the rate attribute and followed by the value we have to pass it so this is a simple xpath i am writing it and if you see here so it is matching that it is matching with that particular search text box let's copy this particular xpath so before that so let's copy the these two lines and here i'll say by xpath and i will pass the youtube.com link here that's a url and let's identify the element so here i'll say wait followed by page and here i'll say get by sorry so for xpath and css selector we have to use the locator so here simply you have to pass the xpath equal to the xpath value we have to pass it so i will pass this particular xpath here that's it firstly i will click on that particular search text box and after that i will pass the search keywords so firstly i am using the click method and then next i am using the fill method to enter the search keywords so here i'll say javascript by testers top that's it guys so after entering the text in the search text box by using the same locator so i will click on i will sorry i will press the enter from the keyboard so here i'm using the one method called press and inside that i'm passing the value as enter so that will press the enter from the keyboard so this will navigate to the youtube.com then it will enter the search keyword and it will press the enter and it will wait for some time and it will close the browser. So this time we are using the xpath to identify the web page element. So as I said just before, xpath equal to is an optional value where you can pass it inside the locator method. And if you see here, so it has navigated to the search results of the YouTube page and our test is getting passed right so this time what i'm doing is simply i will remove this particular xpath equal to so this is an optional value you can pass it or you can ignore it and if i run this test then it will work fine So it has entered a JavaScript by test test talk and it got it got the results also and it is closing the browser and our test is getting passed right in the similar way. So what we will do is let's let's add the CSS selector now. So for CSS selector simply we have to remove the to forward slash and star and at the rate that's it. So this is our CSS selector. So I will go back here and I will copy the whole thing and I will comment out these four lines and here I'll say CSS selector and here I will pass the CSS selector value that's it guys so I will copy this CSS selector value So that's it guys we are done with adding the css selector to identify the element by using the css selector now let's run the playwright test and next time we will pass the css equal to value in the locator method so this time we are passing directly css selector value so 
so it has entered the javascript by test stock and it got the results also and our test is perfectly working fine and here you can pass the css equal to so this is an optional value you can add it or you can ignore it so that's it guys so let's run the playwright test now and it should work fine and if you see here we got the results also and our test is perfectly working fine and if you see here uh, our test is getting passed and here also you can see the check mark here 